What's my line? One more time. <laughs> that is the home of the actual Pukamachubo. The actual Pukamachimi. The actual Pukamapibi. that box and I will help you up. Throw it. Yes. Yes. Hard. Cut. <laughs> I feel like if I go with the shape of it and wiggle it. Oh, no, 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 no. This way. It's got to be this way. That's the one. Oh my god. I do not. Yeah. <laughs> Bugger. Sorry. Oh, that is way too heavy. Thank you. Sorry. I've got oh. trouble for this. Sorry. Oh, oh dear. Yeah, darling, she popped. Oh. Sorry. 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 Sorry, dears. Sorry. I was great. Oh, I was great. I can't feel my lower limbs. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to bite down on my stick? Francisco, I warned you not to come to my jungle, and here you are. <laughs> <laughs> Listen up, I get paid by the number of people I take out, not by the number of people I bring back. Hold on! Jungle Cruise it is very special to me because it's kind of a dream come true. It's my favorite part of the jungle. When I read this script, it just pierced my heart because it was so nostalgic. Piranha, better eat them before they eat you. Here's one of the biggest rides of all time, and to be able to present this story to the world in a way it's never been told before, it was a no-brainer. Let's join the crowd and share with them in the fun of a true life adventure in Adventureland as it is today. The ride is obviously a very famous and well-known ride. It's one of the original rides at Disneyland, designed actually by Walt Disney. The Jungle Cruise ride was Walt Disney's main attraction when the park opened in 1955. He wanted people to come to his park and experience what it's like to go on an adventure in different parts of the world. Jungle Cruise's first skipper in 1955, when the park opened, was Walt Disney himself. I mean, how cool. Then I get to wear this hat now, and he had a hat similar to this, and we wore the same deodorant. No, I'm only kidding. Uh, <laughs> if you look to the left of the boat, you'll see some very playful toucans. They're playing their favorite game of beak wrestling. The only drawback is, only two can play. The first thing you'll notice that's very loyal to the ride is Dwayne Johnson's terrible puns when you first meet the skipper. You know, before this, I used to work in an orange juice factory, but I got canned. Couldn't concentrate. That's a good one. I should have opened with that one. Every time you go on the ride, you never know what puns the skipper's gonna run with, so that's always really cool. You might want to be careful about all the insects around here. They can really bug you. I just found out that I was colorblind. The news hit me right out of the green. I have a pet cat back at the dock who is dyslexic. She runs around the boat saying, whoa, Anne. It's something that the Jungle Cruise ride embraces. It's this silliness and this love of these silly jokes. Here we have a dock on the left and we have a dock on the right. Uh, it's kind of confusing, so we call it a paradox. They're almost so awful at first that you're like, is this supposed to be funny? I had a girlfriend once, she was cross-eyed. Didn't work out. We could never see eye to eye. That is not funny. Oh, you don't find it funny because you have one of those English senses of humor. If I never hear another pun again, I'll be thrilled. I'm also pretty sure she was seeing somebody on the side. <sighs> the goal here, I think, was just to make a movie that respected and honored the ride. Look out! 
We are making sure that elements of the ride, the spirit of the ride, are in the movie. Wait for it. The backside of water. You rarely ever get a cast like this where everyone was our first choice. It was a dream come true. Hold it. Here we go. <laughs> These actors were all the prototypes for the roles on the page, and that's who we went to first. And luckily for us, we got all our first choices. Obviously, it all starts with Dwayne Johnson and Emily Blunt. And then rounding that out is you have the amazing Jack Whitehall, who's hilarious, who plays McGregor. I think we've earned ourselves some nice lunch at the hotel, then a bath and a cocktail. McGregor originally didn't exist in, in the original draft, and we created McGregor as someone to kind of go along with Lily, who would be always in danger. They could smell fear. That might be me. Warm, liquid fear. It was a character that really leapt off the page and appealed to me. Witty, quintessential English gentleman. I thought I'd keep it casual. Well-assembled, a reluctant traveler. And I got to the end of the script, I was like, I think this might be my dad. And I was like, I have to play this character. Ooh. We needed somebody who was very good at kind of reacting and kind of bringing the old world into this new world. I assure you, every one of these items is entirely essential to my survival. Assorted day wear and shoes? Light reading and bathing costumes? <laughs> Not the top hat. Stop it! Jack just plays him so beautifully and with just the best sense of humor. Would it help if I gave it a wiggle around the back? Absolutely yes. not. You could stretch the scenes around and offer suggestions that were just so funny. I spy with my little eye something beginning with S. Thought you might want a lift. I've never played an evil German prince before. So that's always fun to find something that you haven't done. This is what you wear. This is what you wear. Yeah. <laughs> Jesse really designed the character. I gave him free reign. I didn't want to just do stereotypical German villain because we've seen that so many times. The jungle a bit? Yeah. Okay. How do you enjoy all this jungle? The what? The jungle. The jungle. 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 It is a simple question, no? Could you pop it in a sentence? I just did. <laughs> No. <laughs> How do you find? <laughs> oh, you're saying jungle. Jungle, yes. What right. did you think I said? <laughs> jungle. Changi. You're saying jungle. Jungle, yes. It's rather grown on me, the jungle. Say it like you say it, not like I say it. <laughs> <laughs> he learned German for the role. Auftauchen. I was trying to create a character that's sinister and a lot of fun. Hallochen! Santa Maria. And the amazing Paul Giamatti, who I've wanted to work with all forever, is here playing the hideous Mr. Nilo. Buongiorno, Frankie boy! First of all, I've never played an Italian. I am Italian, I've never played an Italian. This is not all of my money. This is like a little pinky thong nothing. Itty pity, little nothing of my money, Frank. Paul Giamatti told me that in all his years, even though his last name is Giamatti, he had never been asked to play an Italian, and that he wanted to, for once, try to do the Italian accent. Hey, Frankie boy, you enjoying your meal? You enjoy the food, Frankie boy? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> louder, louder. He really wanted to have an over-the-top costume, and he even asked for the cockatoo. I mean, that was his idea. Franco's me money. And it was always so funny and such a pleasure to work with. Frank! The first time you see Trader Sam, you don't see it exactly as Trader Sam. He puts on the histrionics whenever he needs to, you know, or she needs to in this case. <laughs> Sam, we had a deal, okay? You and know, it's not I'm Google. tired and this is a whole production. When Michael Green wrote the first draft with Trader Sam as a woman, everything just fit in place. Trader Sam likes a treat. Oh, I bet. She was like a spiritual guide to kind of give the jungle a voice. To prove yourself worthy, you must mend a broken heart. Ooh. I think the reason why they changed it to a woman is a very uh, modern view of, of society. The women in the film, I think, were ahead of our time, each one on her own way. What? And why wouldn't a chief be a woman? Now! 
for me, all of my movies have been multicultural, multilingual. We're using Omagua, which is a language of the Tupi Guarani family from southwestern Brazil. It was the language that the Spanish first encountered when they came into the Amazon about 500 years ago. At a certain point in time, that language basically went extinct. So it's wonderful to hear, reconstructed in the film, coming back to life in the dialogue of the actors. Oh, no. It's hard to make a movie in the actual Amazon, so we had to bring those colors and those textures in our stage, and the tools that we had was the makeup and the costumes. This movie has been a really collaborative process that I think sparks my imagination somehow. Paco Delgado, he's just obsessed with detail. Yeah, just can I do something? Paco, yeah, yeah, get in there, Paco. My mind was like so drawn to movies that they are part of the history of, of, of cinema. And one of them obviously was African Queen. I just thought, you know, she looked like this independent woman, really strong. Details, Paco, it's all in the details. The whole point about Frank is this character has been living for 400 years. We wanted to have influences of different periods. I mean, for example, he wears a waistcoat vest that is a copy of a 19th century vest. His boots are coming from the 17th century. Dwayne, who has never worn a hat before in a movie, you know, in this one wears a hat. We did some really bold choices throughout the movie to create a very distinct look so our characters would be iconic. Is this going to start to get heavy after a while? Yeah, I do. Yeah. And once we're dealing with our conquistador characters and our tribal characters, and you want to make each one of those as sort of visually exciting as possible. The Actonaro, that's our first tribe, the first tribe that our conquistadors encounter. Our design aesthetic for that tribe is very soft. The body design makeups is very flowing, very sort of at one, peaceful. There's no hard lines, there's no hard angles. We encounter that when we see the descendants of the Yaktanaro tribe, which are the Pukamachuna tribe. Their angles are very hard edged. You know, they, as a story point, want to appear intimidating when you first see them. They want to come across as threatening so that people stay away. But, you know, you ultimately discover that they are just as kind hearted as the Yaktanaro tribe. And this one is called a driver. Driver. Uh, the tribes actually used some type of a seed that they would boil down, paint onto their hair, and it's very shiny, looks like enamel. In terms of collaboration, they're always open to, to whatever you need as an actor. And in my case, for example, Trader Sam uses a lot her hands when she's talking. I wanted her to stand out as like, okay, this is somebody. She demands respect. We painted black bones on her finger. It's still very geometric because that's the aesthetic of that tribe. Pretty much. Joel is one of the most innovative makeup artists in the world, and his whole team, everybody's at the top of their games. I just want to say thank you from all of us on the makeup department. Uh, you saved us a yeah. lot of time in the morning. Thank you, guys. Tickles. With a movie like Jungle Cruise, you got to find the right leader and you have to find the right visionary who is going to bring it all together and direct this movie in a very special way. And Jama Colette Serrat, as I like to say, Serrat, many say Sarah, he's a special guy. <laughs> Jama is amazing. Honestly, one of the best directors I've ever worked with. He just has an incredible vision for everything. He knows exactly what he wants, which is brilliant as an actor because you just completely trust him. He has great emotional depth. He is so determined. He has stamina for days, which you need with a film of this scale. It's just so demanding. We had a great meeting with Jama, and at the end of the meeting, he said, do you have any other questions? I said, I do, and it's probably the most important question. What is Jungle Cruise about? Now think about that, and what that answer could be, and how many different directions you could go. He said the movie's about love, because that's what makes our world go around, is love. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And we knew then, in that moment, he's the right guy. And just like that, the movie's anchored in love. Everything else is just built from there. Uh, the action, oh, the humor. Every time. The drama, everything. You'll both my world. It's very lucky for all of us to be part of this ride, this movie, this experience, this adaptation. Oh, it's too short. This whole Jungle Cruise experience is truly a dream come true. Yes. It's not often you kind of get a group like this that are all unbelievably talented. And we're so fortunate to have this crew. 
from the responsibilities to the parks, to the Imagineers, to just everything that spider webs out. It is more than just a movie. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, great day. That's a wrap. All right, Jungle Cruise, that's it. Of all the Jungle Cruises you could take in the Amazon, this one is undoubtedly the cheapest. I have a lot of money. Where were we? I was a big fan of Emily Blunt even before we had worked together. She is one of the most diverse, I think, and multi-threat talented actresses. She could sing, she could dance, she can go deep, she could go darker, she could go lighter. So she does everything. It was so special to have Emily come on and be my co-star. Welcome oh. to the adventure of a lifetime. As a partner, he was just wonderful for me. We hit it off immediately, and I think our relationship as the characters also somewhat mirrors our relationship. It's a man in love. No. <laughs> <laughs> they have an amazing chemistry. That is something that, as a director, you're blessed with, because every scene becomes an opportunity for something magical to happen. Emily Blunt has an incredible sense of mischief and fun, and that's what makes her so brilliant, I think, as well. She keeps every take that she does so energetic and vibrant. It's always full of life. <laughs> she can be the action hero. She can be vulnerable. She can be tough. She can be funny. And she brings all of those things to Lily. <laughs> Two beers, two steaks, uh, uh page, uh, page on. Let me do it one more time. So, I, here, and I'm off to a good start. Dwayne, you know what more can, can you want? He's wonderful. He really listens to the other actors, to the director. He's really present, and he's funny. I picked the wrong vine. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's a wonderful action man, but also he has this vulnerability and this, this charm and this care. That is the home of the actual Puka Machibi. Sorry, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's my fault. Dwayne is so innately funny and so quick, and I think he's also not afraid of looking a bit silly. Do you like it? No, I don't. It's awful. <laughs> 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 I really felt his sort of commitment on an emotional level to this movie, which is just so wonderful to work with because then you know you're fighting to make something really special with someone every day. I love how they're the antithesis of one another as characters, and in some ways Dwayne and I are like the antithesis of one another. It's sort of a funny idea of us being a couple in this movie, but somehow it just works. I asked him, would it be okay if we come and use your gym? <laughs> and he was so nice about it, he was like, absolutely. And I spoke to the producers and they said, did he let you in the Iron Paradise? I said, yeah. And they said, oh, he, no one's ever, ever been allowed in there. So I was like, felt very special. After I picked them clean of meat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, all right, I'm not gonna be looking at you for that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the way you hit the T on hey. meat, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> they were laughing the whole time. There were many, many, many times where we couldn't finish the scene because they were laughing in the middle of it. Shut up, Timothy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they have this amazing energy together. <laughs> <laughs> Load, loaded it up. All right, we're gonna pretend he said that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Time. Okay. Want me to say it again? No. No. I got it. John <laughs> was like, no, no, you got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm just sat there, sort of witnessing this tennis match unfold. Just, just don't do it. <laughs> Dwayne Johnson has become my most enormous buddy in the world. Well, let's see one hand on it. I think you're gonna need two. <laughs> I honestly didn't know what to expect when I met him. I think I imagined that he would be larger than life, which physically clearly he is, but in personality too. And I was so taken by how gentle-souled he was, 
how wise he was, how ludicrously funny he was. Why? <laughs> It was like kismet, I think, that we were to come together and make this movie. We became the greatest friends. It's been awesome. <laughs> Jungle Cruise is about adventure. You are being transported, and you are going on truly the ride of a lifetime. Ah, oh. Ew. Hey. Whatever these characters come across, you are just encompassed in a different world visually. So it's ever changing as they're taken down the river. The experience is ever shifting. The myth is real. We build on a mythology and created characters and situations that put the audience in that right. Break the Break. Ah. Ah. You really want to have a lot of emotion and heart in your films but you also want to have big, memorable set pieces and create those thrills and really transport the audience. Skipper! All right. Frank is a skipper on the Amazon, and he takes a lot of pride in what he does. I built a boat, and I named her after the goddess of the boat, Kila. Because that boat had been built by Frank, it was part of the character of Frank as almost like an extension. She's like his love. She's all he has. She's the only friend he has. So you feel that. You want the boat to feel like an old friend. Look what they did to you. Poor thing. Uh, it's his baby. Please don't. I insist, Lady, Frank. you know what I insist? I insist you leave me alone. Put that back in the bucket and go sit down. It's a kind of lovable, you know, old tramp steamer kind of thing, which Frank kind of is in many ways. This is my engine. Nobody touches my engine but me. For me, it was very important to kind of preserve the silhouette a little bit of what the boats in the right were. It's like almost like a Frankenstein of the boat. Because if Frank is immortal and he spends his time to adjust, rebuild, so this boat is made of like 25 moments of construction. She was one of the things we were most excited about making in this, and I'm so thrilled with how she came out, the colors, the texture, the ruggedness. I think John Vincent did a phenomenal job at designing it, just bringing all the little details that made, like killing the way that I envisioned it, something both beautiful and practical. She weighs nearly 30,000 pounds with these electric engines from Germany that have BMW motors in them. We could get the boat up to seven knots. How nice of you to join us. Why don't you jump in the water? I don't want to talk about it. She can't swim. You booked a river cruise and you can't swim? I mean, the movie, obviously, is called Jungle Cruise, so people get on a boat and they go up the river. These days, you can have the water be digital, but we had a lot of water interaction. We had a lot of people going into the water, out of the water, even when Frank is dangling from the side, his feet are on the water. So we needed to have the boat in the water. Jama explained he wanted a large portion of the movie to be filmed on a tank in front of a blue screen and outdoor light. We were on it for a heck of a long time on this water tank in Atlanta, and it really felt very real. Butter churn, how literal a metaphor. If you have anything of value, I would recommend you store it below deck. Here we go. This tank's a round tank because they wanted current, and so we put this island in the middle so the current could go round and round. Jama needed the boat to be able to move, to spin, to rock back and forth, to gimbal around. So that was the first thing we set out to design on this film, was the tank and the gimbal for the boat. JD designed a boat that could move up and down this tank. It could tilt and turn and give the illusion that we were moving with the fans and everything. I get a terrible motion sickness. It's a genuine problem, but I think I've navigated a, a route through it. You're looking a little green around the gills. <laughs> I didn't throw up on the rock.
time. It's just exteriors, no interiors, but you can really walk around this place and feel like you're in a real place. Buongiorno, signorina. So we could really get the light from the actual world and the interaction and people could enter and exit through doors. Everything tells some story because I'm really between the 18th and the 19th century everywhere because I'm supposed to be 1917. So I like to root all the, the construction with proportion, doors. I'm using gardens everywhere. I'm putting steps everywhere. It really feels like something that should be placed in the middle of Disneyland or Disney World. It's true world creation on the highest level. When we came back here to Atlanta, we had to look at what we had. We had stages and we had a forest across the street, which we were able to jungle-fy in a very convincing way and making flowers and all the plant life that you'd see in the Amazon. Frank, would you like to bite down on my stick? Uh, no, I'm fine. There if you need it. So many of the scenes were practical sets. There was the tree village, which was like mind-blowing. And it's amazing as an actor, because you're there and you're experiencing it and you feel like you're in that world. Lily. <laughs> the tree village, it's like something very, very classical. It was a little bit complex to find the structure of the jungle, make trees, vines, and plants. Like the density of information and the fact that I add many layers of material, a mixture of polystyrene, resin, silicone, real branch, fake silk plants and real plants. We rigged the Tree Village set with a really intricate water dripping system throughout the whole place to kind of give it that element that the tree's alive and in a rainforest. This movie has a lot of visual effects. For the jungle aspect, we started the movie thinking that we would go to the Amazon, we would shoot some plates, and then we would just composite the blue screen. But it became obvious that it would take months to go get, because the, all these amazing places in the Amazon are really far away from each other. So we decided to go full CG on the Amazon, and that really freed us. So we'd create this lush environment in the computer, and I was just blown away with what these artists with their tools today could do with plant life and water, and the eye for detail was just amazing. It's really all about the wildlife. You want a lot of mosquitoes and things that you might not even notice, but it makes it more lively and really just helps tell the story and sell that it is the Amazon, even though it's not. In terms of Proxima, I think what they did was incredible. That was Weta. They've done incredible creature design. They spend a lot of time analyzing real animals. The detail that they brought to Proxima, there's so many little tiny intricacies. It's the fur, it's the eyes. And then you start to figure out how it moves. Simple things like her walking. The first shots where you see her in this bar scene, she's just simply pacing into the room and looking around as a predator does. And it was about getting all those subtleties down. You want it to look visceral and real. You want to see all those muscles and you want it to come to life. And action! We had an on-set actor dressed in a cat suit. You want my cross and knock down? Yeah. To perform as the cat, and then that actor was erased and Proxima was put in its place. I also did all the creature movement on Disney's uh, Jungle Book, so that was a big help in learning an animal movement. He was basically an eye line for us, and it gave something for the actors to act to. <laughs> I'm going to be really honest with you. Up until today, I thought Jaguars were the black ones. So when Ben walked onto set this morning in that costume, I just thought that that was a fashion choice. To be fair, he just had the bottom half, he had the trousers. I thought leopard skin trousers, and I thought, hey, that's just a guy that likes to rock out with leopard skin trousers. This is his first day on set, it's a bold choice. And then I went, oh no, he's the man playing the Jaguar, because that's what Jaguars look. I definitely did my research, watched a lot of videos. Hopefully I can bring the most realistic version of what a jaguar would actually do. He did it! 
We wanted to create a cat that was scary, but also endearing at the same time people could relate to. And Weta just did a spectacular job. I believe that Proxima exists. I mean, I think that after you watch the movie, you believe that that cat really exists. You did good, Proxima. You're a good girl. In terms of the Conquistadors, we talked to ILM, they've done a lot of work in movies like Pirates, where they're able to create these fully CG characters. Bagheera is the catalyst of the whole story. He's one of the original Conquistadors that goes into the Amazon, and we need an actor that could transcend the technical aspect of the visual effect and still deliver an incredible performance, and that's why that girl is perfect. Acaso creéis que aún tenemos alma? There's a curse that came upon the conquistadors. And we became everything that we hated from the jungle. Creo que es la primera vez que se ven los conquistadores en el siglo XIX, donde ya tenemos un hechizo con la serpiente, con el barro, con las abejas, con las raíces. Por eso creo que es un momento muy épico de la película. Melchor is this conquistador. The way he's cursed, being covered in mud and frogs, really doesn't match well with something who is worried about being clean or who's gonna spend like 400 years in the jungle surrounded by frogs and mud. Somos asquerosos. Habla por ti, eh? Yo estoy buenísimo. Sancho is made of bees and beeswax and honey, and he is amazing. The bees are always breaking down and building honeycomb on him, and he's just kind of oozing honey. Gonzalo is made of vines. We wanted him to move like time-lapse photography, like when plants kind of grow, because it's creepy. And I became the lord of the snakes, because I killed a snake, and I, I feared them, I hate them. So that's part of the course. ILM developed a new technique to capture the performance. We had tracking markers on the face of the actors that were not visible unless they were under infrared light. So attached to the main camera, we had these other infrared cameras and infrared light that would then pick up these markers. That way we could use the actor's face themselves when needed. So the actors didn't have to wear the usual helmet cameras. So they could act normally within the scene. Action! and then the CG skin would have been put over them. So that was really groundbreaking and it really freed us to shoot them and, and for the actors to perform. You have to use your imagination because most of the things that we have to do, we don't know how they're gonna look. When I move my hand and mud's gonna be dripping, so how would you move to give a lot of options to the FX guy afterwards to, to put mud on that movement? <laughs> When movies like this are done the right way, there's a quality that seeps into the DNA and it remains with you, it stays with you. You're just, you're taken away. Did you like it? That was good. We had all the tools necessary to make everything feel authentic. The action pieces are so big and, you know, we had such a great visual effects team and production design team. And, and I think that makes the action very enjoyable for the whole family. Welcome to the land of blue skies and sunshine, beautiful Anaheim, California, where Disneyland Park opened to an excited public way back in 1955. On that storied opening day, intrepid explorers had the joy of boarding the Jungle Cruise for the very first time. Walt Disney based the ride on the educational True Life Adventure films, but by the 60s, he wanted to liven things up by tickling the funny bones of all who came aboard. Today's daring travelers leave their worlds behind for a sometimes perilous, always hilarious 10,000-mile journey down the world's most terrific, treacherous, and truly terrifying rivers. But our courageous adventurers aren't on their own. Oh, no. They're guided by the Jungle Cruise skippers, clad in khaki and stylish wide-brimmed safari hats to protect them from all that pun in the sun. 
With over six decades of jungle cruises embarking from Anaheim, Orlando, Tokyo, and Hong Kong, there have been dozens, nay, hundreds, nay, dare I say, thousands of skippers to take the helm of this unmatched journey. Today, you, my friend, have the good fortune of hearing from some of these skippers as they tell their tales from all those years on the water. Sit down, strap in, stay dry, as the Jungle Cruise skippers take it away. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the world-famous world Jungle Cruise. Cruise. Hi, my name is Alex Williams. I was a Jungle Cruise skipper in 2006 at the Walt Disney World Resort in the Magic Kingdom Park, before moving across the country in 2009 to be here at the Disneyland Resort. Currently, I am with D23, the official Disney fan club, where I get to work on events and uh, membership. My name is Kelly Small, and I have been a Jungle Cruise skipper here at the Disneyland Resort in Anaheim from 2007 to 2018. My name is Flor Torres, and I am a skipper here at the world-famous Jungle Cruise in Anaheim at the Disneyland Resort. I've been a skipper since 2012, all the way to present. Hello, my name is Aaron Drew. I was a skipper at the World Famous Jungle Cruise here at Disneyland Resort in Anaheim, California from 2008 until 2011. I'm currently a part of the attractions management team over at Avengers Campus. So Jungle Cruise, let's talk about like how you, everybody kind of got started at the Jungle Cruise. We all have our own stories, we've all gone our own lives and everything like that. So Kelly, why don't you start? Like, How did you sure. get started at the Jungle Cruise? So I applied to um, work at the Disneyland Resort and when I went in, they were like, hey, let's do attractions. Well, there's one spot left in Adventureland. Do you want it? And I was like, oh, I don't know. Is it the Jungle Cruise? She was like, well, we don't really know. I can't really say. And I was like, I'll take it if it's the Jungle Cruise. That sounds <laughs> awesome. And she was like, okay, we'll do it. <laughs> were you nervous at all when you actually found out it was the Jungle Cruise? Were you excited or? I was very nervous, very excited. Um, it's such a neat attraction. And uh, I just was glad that I have a chance to be a part of it. Mm -hmm but also I realized that you have to kind of do a seven minute monologue every couple of minutes. And that was terrifying. I was like, oh my gosh, people are paying money and they're gonna come and sit on this boat. And like, what if I'm terrible? <laughs> um, but it's been great. Flora, how about you? What, how did you get started at the Jungle Cruise? Well, same thing. I applied uh, like Kelly did. And then uh, when I, the recruiter was talking to me, the first offer he made was like, how do you feel about the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique? oh, you're gonna get to do hair, and you're gonna get to do makeup. And I have no experience with that whatsoever. And so I was like, that sounds really cool, but what else do you have? Do you have anything else? And then they're like, oh, how about attractions? Yeah, and then I ended up getting Jungle Cruise, which I was really excited for it, but also I was really scared too, because I studied a lot of like writing. So I did like playwriting and things like that. And so being on that side, like you're more on the back end of things, but when you're out here, it's like you're in front of everybody and that's totally different from what I had, like any experience that I had before, but it's something that I was very excited to do. And um, yeah, so, so I, I applied in um, 2012 and so I, I've been there for nine years. So for me, it was a little different story. When I originally hired in, um, I wanted attractions and I wanted Adventureland because I wanted Jungle Cruise. They put me at Tarzan's Treehouse. <laughs> and I would see the Jungle Cruise go around and I was like, that's amazing, that's what I wanna do. And then finally they were like, oh, we're gonna train you. And I was like, awesome, Jungle Cruise. They said, no, Big Thunder Mountain. <laughs> and then I eventually finally talked my way into getting the Jungle Cruise and I was super excited. I was like, this is gonna be awesome. Day one of training, I was like, this is super scary. I don't know if I want it anymore. <laughs> um, but it, it worked out. I ended up being at the Jungle Cruise all together just under three years. Do you guys all think the Jungle Cruise helped push you out of, you kind of had this trend, push you out of your comfort zone? Oh yeah, yes. very yes. <laughs> yes. It kind of just shapes you into a different person. Like yeah. I would not be who I am today if I didn't work at the Jungle Cruise. And I know that sounds really cheesy, but like it's so, so yeah. true. So true, mm -hmm. yeah. I 100% agree. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would be able to sit here today in front of the cameras <laughs> were it not be for the opportunity to get to be on Jungle Cruise and get to do that every day. And you think about all the people that have worked at the Jungle Cruise around the world, it's crazy. We all have our own story. We all have our own yeah. path and how we kind of got here. There was this really fun uh, contest they did in for Tokyo Disney's 25th anniversary. And I was fortunate enough to get chosen to go to Tokyo Disneyland and work their Jungle Cruise for a week. It was like a week of being like a rock star. So technically I got to work on three of the Jungle Cruises. So one day I'll have to make it to Hong Kong as well. So, but it was amazing the kinship you kind of feel when you get over there and you realize, you know, here you're, it's great because we have such a family, whatever your time period is. It's wild to be a part of a global community. Yeah. Right, like it's, it's weird to, 
be a part of yeah. something that big. And I know mm -hmm. I, we work at Disneyland, of course it's that big, mm -hmm. but it's weird to feel so close and personal to something that is felt by so cast many. members like across the world. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's like whenever we get skippers that come from different places that come here, they always come up to us and say hello, and then we're always so welcoming too, because it's like, we're, we're all family. We're a big yeah. Jungle Cruise skipper family. Welcome aboard the world famous Jungle Cruise. My name is uh, Alex. Welcome everybody to the world famous Jungle Cruise. My name is Floor. In Spanish, that means flower, but in English, it just means floor. I will be your skipper, your tour guide, your navigator, your crocodile wrestler, your master chef, and your dance instructor for the next five exciting <gasps> days and 12 romantic nights, aww. My name is Aaron and I'll be your skipper for as far as we get, which hopefully is back here to the dock. You know, you have like a day and a half really to try to kind of digest, what, 200 and some odd pages, if not more than that, of a spiel. And then you get that day and a half to try to compile that. And you get into your first trip and you're like, I remember nothing, go forward. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys talking about? It, it was perfect day one for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> you want so badly to say these like really good, long, hard hitting, funny jokes but then you just forget all the words halfway in between, or by the time you finish your joke, you're already in the next scene, and uh -huh. you're like, I'm yeah. not talking about the same thing anymore. <laughs> so you just kind of go with the one-liners and hope for the best, and then yeah. the longer you go, the the more you're able to kind of pepper in new things and try new things out, because you get timing a little bit better. Maybe it wasn't like doing my homework all the time in college, but I remember going home that night and like with a highlighter and just be like, I'm these are the best ones yeah. going through it. and. Never use. <laughs> never use. Never use. Just use. black marker. This is horrible. Redacted. Redacted. I mean, you can't not say backside of water, but people will tell you if you don't say backside of water. Yes. Yeah. But there's other ones. If you don't say backside of water, people will mutiny. I'm like, look over <laughs> this rock formation on the other side, not paying attention to the water on the waterfall. One of my favorite jokes to use would be there is an African bull elephant, which is the second most feared animal here in the jungle. And if you look to the other side, you'll see the first most feared animal in the jungle, his mother-in-law. I'd like to take this moment and point out a few of my favorite plants. Moving on. Up here, we have some hibiscus. And down here, we have some lobiscus. Right here in the middle, we have some medium biscus. This morning, I had biscuits and gravy. What did you have? You know what? Never mind. That's one of my biscuits. I've had some good crews. I've had some bad crews, and well, <laughs> you've been one of them. And I don't know how I'm going to say goodbye to each and every single one of you. I just don't. I mean, of all the crews I have ever had, <laughs> you've definitely been the most recent. So my favorite segment of the jungle, I mean, I love the boathouse. I think the boathouse is iconic and it has so much history. And truly, as a skipper, you spend so much time there that it really is your home away from home, which is the entire point. This is an outpost in the middle of nowhere, and it is our last bastion of society. So I love the boathouse. But out in the river, I love the hippo pool. Hippos are some of my favorite animals. And like Alex was saying, there's so many jokes that you can possibly say there. It's great. You know, you don't always go to every part of the boathouse and it's like, you have to you know, explore it differently based on how long the queue is. But like, you know, there's a part of it where the, somebody, you know, knocked down a pole column one night, a pole at night and they propped it up with a palm tree. And that's all that we had. That's all we had. My favorite, I have to say, is probably the trapped safari, just because that's kind of the first glimpse to where we can see people and the, stuff that they're getting into is some very terrible situations. You know, they're stuck up on a pole. I like the jokes there are so cheesy, but they, they're they so funny and they I think they land pretty much every time. For me, actually both of those areas are two of my favorites. So the trap safari and the hippo pool. Um, trap safari just because I love to like not tell the joke about the actual safari. <laughs> yeah. And you're just like, Agreed. look, there's rocks. <laughs> like, it's amazing. Or you point to the other side and everybody's yeah. like, well, what's that? You're like, don't pay attention to that. This Nothing thing. Here. So <laughs> it's funny enough on its own. It's amazing, yeah. right? You know, I think something that's interesting about the jungle is the actual jungle itself. Like, you know, the fact that 1954 into 1955 is when it's from the first stuff planted. This is a real jungle. And I think like that's kind of one of the other coolest things. It's just the ecosystem yeah. that we live within. You know, it's, it's made this amazing setting. It's grown, it's become its own thing. And then it's like the perfect background because as a, as a jungle crew skipper, part of the magic is like us, the attraction and then connecting with the guests. So I think that's kind of like the secret sauce that helps mm -hmm. bring it all together. It really is the jungle that, that makes it what it is, yeah. right? Like it is mm -hmm. all of the 
uh, plants that bring all of the settings to life. Yeah. yeah. The thing that I have taken with me from my time here at the Jungle Cruise is that like history and heritage piece, right? This is one of the original attractions. Being in touch with a place where Walt really walked, right? Mm -hmm. Somewhere that um, means so much to world, you know, the world, right? Uh, people around the world. For me, definitely it's that camaraderie. And I went from like, you know, awkward, baby skipper to then like, you know, a trainer a few years later and then a lead and then now a core lead. It's part of my personality now. <laughs> it's ingrained <laughs> in my DNA. It like, is my personality. Is my you, you could take the uh, skipper out of the jungle, but you can never take the jungle out of the yes. skipper. Yes, so exactly. <laughs> That's the yeah. It's a huge part of who I am because I was here for so long at such a key moment in life, right? So I grew up here and I learned so much from all the people that were around and um, this, place is so unique but with that comes like really unique situations that you find yourself in and if you can deal with some of the things that you are you are thrown here you can deal with anything when you really think about it and you're like really thinking about jungle cruise and you think about like oh yeah i trained that person you know mm -hmm. i trained this person oh they're like a lead now or oh they're doing this now and it's like all these skippers have their little handprints all over the jungle cruise yeah and like that stays forever, it keeps yeah. going and going. It's crazy to think how much this place affects you. I was just sitting here thinking and listening to everybody talk. Like my wife, I met through the Jungle Cruise, right? Like you trained her. I trained her. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you realize just sitting here, or I realize just sitting here how much all of you, even you, cause you know, I didn't get to work with you, but I've known of you for the last nine years, mm -hmm. really have affected my life and you know, Thanks, Jungle Cruise. But yeah, it really affects every fiber and part of your being mm -hmm. after being here, you know, and that's amazing. A piece of advice that I would give to a brand new skipper, louder does not always mean funnier. So if I were to give a new skipper some advice, I would tell them, if you ever get stuck in a situation with a rhino, just remember, you don't have to run faster than the rhino. You just have to outrun the person next to you. Don't worry about being the funniest. Don't worry about giving the perfect spiel. Just be yourself. Part of what makes the Jungle Cruise fantastic is what we all bring to it. Every skipper has their way of saying things. Every skipper has their presentation. And if you're yourself, then you're great. You're taking guests around this river again and again and again, but it's not only the first time for most of them. It's also your first time going around it every time and treat it that way. Never, you know, appreciate it. There's gonna be long, grueling days, but the fact is that you are never gonna have that day, that time with that boatload of guests and the weather. And it's just, there's a magic of the Jungle Cruise that happens every time you make a cycle around the river here. And that's, I think the best thing to remember uh, about it is just have fun and enjoy every second of it. Wretched contraption. Excuse me, move.
That was utterly amazing. So impressive. Oh, I'm going to die. No, you're not. I will not let that happen to you. What? No, I'm in my toiletries. Look, they're ruined. Oh, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Verdammt noch mal! <coughs> I, uh, I presume whoever was driving that boat, you're going to find him and kill him. Yeah? Real painful, like? Uh, my name is Anilo, and this is uh, my town. And I know where they're going. Yeah, the brother, he tells me exactly where I want to go, so uh, if you give me a crayon, a map, I'll show you. If I choose to, choose to? Well, I mean, last time I checked it, you're the one who blow up all of my boats. You know how long it takes me to get a one boat? Uno batello. And I get two, three, four. <laughs> Maron. Yes, but what is to stop me from taking a knife and cutting off little pieces until you tell me for nothing? Chop off my toes, feed them to the fruit bats. Chop off my nose, feed them to the piranhas. I don't care! You're looking at a Napolitan who's got nothing left to lose. Or oh, what if instead I stuff your bird Roast it ah. and serve it to you on a plate. <laughs> Fun. Would you like that? <laughs> you wouldn't have any guts. Langsam anfahren. Fünf Grad Steigung. Wir sofort gemacht. Mach mal den. Verstanden. Come to think of it, let's make it half million. Yes. Los, 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 marsch. Wo, wo, komm es da? Why would you do that? To cover the damage. Come. Uh, don't worry about them. We just have to get the arrowhead. As soon as we hit the rapids, uh, that's going to be our best chance. Because I need it. More than them. I've been stuck here so long, I just stopped having hope to get out. Oh, shut up your fleet toboggan. They're just customers. And you're just a big dumb cat. Good night, girl. Get some sleep. verlagert werden sollte. Er ist ein komischer Kauz. Ich hab's dir doch gesagt. Es ist zumindest sicher hier. Hans! Hans! Axel, säcke den Kopf nach links. Da. Der Junge! Der Tunnel hat sie geholt. Wir müssen weg. Sofort. Ja, 
Ja, perfekt. Genau so halten. Hab, Hab seinen Kopf. Brazil's finest. I made it myself. Thank you. Welcome. Miss Lily, Brazil's finest. I made it for you myself. I don't drink coffee. My favorite cup. Is it? It was. Sam, thank you for all the food. I'll be leaving at first light. Yeah. It's right, you know. It's dangerous. The cannibals, I suppose. How long have you two been performing that little routine, anyway? For as long as I can remember. He is the most disreputable man I've ever met. Possibly. Possibly. But you still should do as he says. No, thank you. He likes you. And you owe me money. I need to keep my interests protected. Well, Frank Wolf, if that's even his name, only minds his own interests, so good luck with that. Frank Wolf is the reason why the Puka Mishuna is still here. He made up all this rubbish and hunter story about us to keep the tourists and the rubber barons away. He knows what happens when outsiders come to the jungle. The jungle burns. He protected the Puka Mishuna. Where's my brother? Oh, don't worry, he's safe. I hit him. Somewhere here. Oh, what I saw was real. They turned into snakes and vines and bees. Well, live conquistadors. Well, not alive, strictly speaking. I like your pants. Frank, he really was trying to help me and I wouldn't listen. So stupid. He died because I wouldn't listen. Too bad you didn't listen. Goodbye, Frank. Goodbye. You're 400 years old. Your skin is exceptional. Please leave. Gonna miss you, big guy. Bye. Love you. You too. And I'll see you soon, all right? Please take care of him, Sam. We died together. Oh. Hold him. Live together, also an option. School. Yeah. Uh, piggyback. Uh. Did 
today we break the curse and it's finally over. <laughs> yes, I completely agree. She's very charming. But you know what? It's my time. It was my time long ago, and after today I'm done and take whatever comes next. <laughs> it's okay, you'll be fine. You're gonna make new friends. It'll be good. She'll be fine too. No, nothing's changed. Plus, she doesn't even like my sense of humor. Believe that? Good morning. Good morning. It's for you. It's a little repurposed tea. That would warm it up for you. sweet. You look nice, Kelly. Cheers. What is that smell? You like it? Oh, no, it's awful. It's this area of the jungle. It just, it always uh, smells funny. Mm hmm Yes! Yeah. 